Hello everybody. Today I'll discuss about the laser and electron beam welding processes. So this is usually called the high energy beam welding process. So in a uh, typical laser welding system, we can see uh, the if you look follow this figure. Here we have uh, some uh, kind of the laser light source of the laser light is there and or maybe generation of the laser light and then we create some kind of the beam laser beam which is uh, must be parallel come out uh, from the uh, laser system and it is using some kind of the lens we just focus on on the workpiece material at, as per our requirement. So this is the typical uh, setup of a laser welding system. So we just use the by using the this uh, power of the lens or maybe uh, geometry dimension of the lens we can decide what is the power density which is actually uh, focusing on the workpiece substrate surface. And based on that, uh, we can decide what kind of the what may be the material volume can be welded or joined using this particular laser source. So, you know, laser welding is usually highly concentrated coherent light beam, which is more than that of any kind of the arc welding system. And it is called as laser light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, if you look into uh, this part, the first light. A amplification stimulated S E and radiation R. If you took pick up this uh, particular letter and it becomes the uh, laser system. So laser actually create very uh, narrow and uh, is a very deep welding process and that is the purpose of using specifically the high energy beam as a laser for welding of the uh, component. So of course the quality of the laser weld joint is the very high because it is very much focused we can control the laser light we can control the material volume to melt we can control the depth of penetration that is why in as compared to the any arc welding system that is why it is quality of the oil is a little better as compared to the arc welding process. So in this case both type of the laser can be a solid laser as well as the gas laser both can be utilized depending upon the application. So for example the solid laser YAG, YAG and gas laser commonly use the CO2 laser uh, mostly wide in case of the laser welding applications. <coughs> so of course the laser welding system does not require any vacuum or it cannot generate the excess like electron beam welding process. So that is the uh, kind of the advantage this thing. So but of course laser welding we use when the welding system we can use the shielding gas also to protect the molten material uh, from the outside atmosphere but that option is there. So in this case there is no need to create or require any kind of the vacuum chamber to perform the laser welding system. So at the same time as compared to the arc welding system the heat affected zone is, is very small and that is why the very because of the very small heat affected zone because its laser can be focused in the very small space. So that is why in, it is widely used in the electronics industry or any where there is a micro uh, processing technology. So that means where the this uh, we can utilize the laser system. Similar to electron beam welding in this cases no flux, no filler metal or no sealing medium are required. But higher initial cost is the hindrance in this, this thing. But in this cases it is a not uh, correct because sometimes we use the shielding medium uh, in, in case of the laser welding system and we using some kind of the, the this shielding gas to protect the uh, this thing to uh, on the workpiece surface. So the shielding gas system is basically focused on this part where right? it is protect the molten materials for that purposes we can use the shielding medium but in this case no flux no filler metal usually we use but of course it is optional if there is a need we can use the filler metal also because we can feed the extra filler metal to melt the substrate but using laser as a heat source. So that flexibility is there and uh, if but the thing is that here it is uh, the higher initial cost is actually uh, the is the main, main uh, issues associated of using the widely using the laser welding system because if you compare uh, the cost of a laser system and the arc welding system the definitely a laser system is actually more costly. So that is why from that point of view uh, laser is costly system. So probably do not use that widely as compared to the arc welding system. But of course if you want to create any very precision weld joint is required then laser is the more appropriate option as compared to the arc welding system. Now what are the laser can be uh, created laser light can be created we see the from this figure some power supply is there uh, some laser pump is there a uh, laser pump uh, it can be the lamp it can be diode pump it can be radio frequency can generate such that uh, in this case the laser light will emit and it is basically excited the laser active medium. Uh, 
So, in this case, laser active medium is there, but it should be excited by some kind of the external power supply here, the, which can be called as the laser pump is basically to create the, um, this um, wave to just excite uh, this uh, lasing medium. So, then from the lasing medium, the uh, so many uh, coherent, the synchronized phase of the light is basically emits and we within the, uh, we can use the mirror one and mirror two within the chamber. We can create the culminate the parallel nature of the beam will come out from the system, which is this is system is completely on the resonator. So, basically in a laser system, we have the lasing medium is one component. So, lasing medium means it actually provides appropriate transition and determines the wavelength. Of course, it must be have a, in a metastable state. So, through which the laser light is actually generated. For example, it uh, it determines the wavelength. For example, in due solid laser and CO2 laser, the wavelength are different in these two cases. And of course, it depends on the uh, lasing medium, what medium we are utilizing based on that wavelength can be decided in case of the laser system. Then there is a pump. Pump provides energy necessary for the population inversion. That means it is uh, just to uh, use for the excited the lasing medium. For that purpose, you can use the pump. And then optical cavity, which is this uh, complete system through which provides the opportunity for amplification and provides the directional beam, which is defined length and transparency. With defined length and transparency, we can uh, we can create some uh, with a one kind of the directional beam within the optical cavity. So that is the purpose of utilizing the optical cavity. Cavity. So here. Uh, but we cannot change the wavelength here. Wavelength is basically decided by the uh, the lasing medium, and here and a pump is basically used there just to excite the lasing medium to emit the laser light, and then optical cavity decides the this uh, opportunity for amplification. And it it basically job is to create some kind of the directional beam is the output from the optical cavity, and further if we put laser and the parallel beam of the laser light in, if you put any kind of the lens in between then we can we can we can converge or diverge of the laser light depending upon the type of the lens we can utilize in a laser system now properties of the laser it's basically monochromatic of course one laser medium can create one single wavelength uh, in general it creates the high intensity of the laser so this laser we can utilize for the welding purpose or joining of the two purpose but this laser can be a uh, different way when this laser light is interacting with the workpiece material depending upon the intensity of the laser or power intensity of the laser it can be conduction mode it can be uh, uh, this uh, keyhole mode or it can be transition mode in between. So both all these three modes are possible. So in, in this case the laser power density we need to calculate the laser power density and actually do uh, to maximum then when the laser uh, the high power high power de uh, density the purpose of utilizing the high power density to maximize the produce the oil depth of penetration of course at the same time with minimum heat affected zone the maximum depth of penetration is the basic objective that actually decided usually by the uh, laser power density process. So the weld is from yeah, the intense laser light rapidly hits the material. So, when laser is interacting with the sub, uh, workpiece material, it is melt the substrate material and then coalescence of the two substrate material usually occurs with the allow to some melting and solidification of the material. So, usually in fraction of the milliseconds, the very rapidly heat. So, it takes very less time to just heat the substrate material. Depending upon the power density, two types are and content within the, the power density is basically depending on the power divided by the focused area. So, that actually decides the laser power density. So, of course, this power density depends on the focus spot size and the laser power. But based on that power density, we can say it is a conduction mode, it is a transition mode or it can be the penetration or keyhole mode oiling process. We can see the conduction mode and transition mode and the keyhole mode here see that conduction mode that it is a the profile of the oil bit profile very close to the arc oiling system. The aspect ratio you can see the width is little uh, more, the depth of penetration is also not high. So this kind of the and there is no vaporization of the material uh, of the workpiece. So, in that cases, this type of condition creates the conduction mode laser oiling process. But if you keyhole mode, in, in this case, the maximum temperature can cross the vaporization temperature of the material and you can see that the width is actually narrow or depth of penetration is actually very high. So, when it is creating the keyhole, in this case, see a high depth of penetration possible to achieve. So, of course, this is possible if the power density is very, very high. So, here power density is the low, here power density is the high. 
Now in between the transition mode, the power density is between conduction mode and keyhole mode. The oil bit dimension heat affected in everything between the conduction mode and keyhole mode. And in this case, the transition from conduction to keyhole mode welding process usually occurs. Now conduction mode, the characteristic of the conduction mode is that that uh, low power, uh, energy density or power density it is around 0 0.5 megawatt per centimeter square in this case oil nugget is formed but shallow and white usually but the heat to create the oil into the material by conduction form of the surface it means the heat conduction is there because it means that there is no keyhole no vaporization front is uh, developed uh, during the conduction laser process so uh, that is the main difference in these cases but application is the aesthetic weld or when particulars are concerned such as certain battery sealing applications we can find out uh, this the conduction or laser oil process such that we can control the uh, or we can limit the laser power density with this particular application. So here you can create the conduction mode laser oiling uh, system. Now transition mode the transition mode between the at the medium power density usually around 1 megawatt per centimeter square about of course more penetration than the conduction mode due to the creation of the old which is known as the keyhole of course but keyhole is the form of a vaporized metal that exists into the material but in this case the keyhole size is usually less small where keyhole will be creating it creates some kind of vaporized uh, front at this point and that vaporized front becomes stable and it moves ahead with the moving of the laser light. So when it just moves ahead, those of the, the this cavity created by this thing will be filled by the molten material. So this way it is create the uh, keyhole. Now this keyhole uh, is actually now what is the extent of the keyhole formation is there depending upon whether it is keyhole mode or whether it is transition mode uh, welding process. But of course in this case keyhole is this low and it is as a contact to deliver the laser power into the material. So in this case keyhole size of the usually less in case of the transition mode. Now if you look the perfectly keyhole mode in this case penetration is very high which is characterized by the very narrow weld and directly delivery of the laser power into the material and that actually maximize the oil depth of penetration minimize the heat affected zone or reducing the heat affected zone and as well as the distortion also when there is a complete keyhole is there for example. So in since keyhole can exist stable or extent of the keyhole is very high. So we can use this particular system as a we can move the laser as a very fast speed. So we can you can take the more speed uh, when keyhole mode a uh, laser we are apply. So in system for example it can go up to 5 millimeter per second and tip penetration typically 0 0.5 millimeter or at a lower speed with the depth of penetration can go up to 12 millimeter. So all these cases it can reach the keyhole mode but at very high speed it can only depth of penetration 0.5 millimeter but when the speed is very low then it can go up to the 12 millimeter uh, penetration. This is just an example that what way the keyhole mode laser oiling system works. We can see that if you see power density versus the oil depth so we can see the conduction mode there is a the the slope is uh, not much gradually increasing but one particular zone there is a transition from conduction to keyhole mode in this case slope is very high, so very narrow power density it is basically transition from thing and when it is uh, uh, this power density is very high it creates the penit the, the keyhole mode laser oiling system and in this case the power density is gradually increasing so then size of the keyhole actually increases. Now it's the keyhole provides two key processing condition so two important points associated with the when there is a formation of the keyhole in laser oiling system one is the it enables almost 100% absorb laser light because within the keyhole there is a vapor domain it creates then laser light reflection so all absorption of the laser is much more when there is a creation of the laser light. So in that case it is a basically keyhole looks like a the similar to a like pipe basically pipe entering the it is a source of the of the energy of the laser energy who is uh, entering to the substrate material. So I mean to say that if this is the workpiece material so laser can enter in the form of a pipe inside so this all are full of the laser energy. So this when moves it but of course this it is the this uh, boundary is basically between the this inside is the vapor domain and the liquid. So it is a stable between the liquid and vapor domain but is a string of the energy can be considered uh, looks like pipe such so that it supply the energy much more energy in, within the substrate material but 
this keyhole there is a reflection of the laser light is happened within the keyhole. So, then absorption of the laser means the very minimum reflection occurs and maximum absorption of the laser light usually occurs in the keyhole mode welding process. So, it can create much more depth of penetration. So, this keyhole modes of high efficiency in creating depth can be used across the well depth range. So, basically the key, depending upon the keyhole size we can we can we, it is very close to the we can see depth of the keyhole is very equivalent to the what is the depth of penetration usually occurs in this particular the laser welding system. So, actually very high keyhole you can get when this is the size of the keyhole. So, string of the energy but in this case the liquid domain is also very less and the heat effect domain is also very less when it is associated with the keyhole mode laser welding system. Now, there is another way to operate the laser system one may be the continuous laser another is the pulse laser and both can be utilized uh, in a laser welding system. So, in this case of course, laser can be used in the uh, either it can create the spot welding structure or it can create the seam welding. Seam welding means when laser is moving one particular direction and spot welding means laser is stationary at particular point. So, both the cases it can create the some oil pool or oil formation is possible. And in these two ways basically achieve two ways one is the pulse and continuous mode. So, pulse basically produces series of the pulses discrete packets of the energy supply and at certain pulse width and characterized by the pulse width and pulse frequency using the laser. Say take an example here we can see this is the power versus the time follow this figure. Uh, here see that this red this red uh, block it indicates that within that time domain this energy is supplied to the substrate and remaining part then next supply of the energy is basically uh, again it will be when the red part is coming. So, of course, it is characterized by the some cycle time when it is cycle time means it is associated with some around, uh, certain frequency of this pulse. So, pulse is characterized by the pulse width, pulse width means duration of the pulse, how much time this energy is supply and uh, at the same time what is the frequency of this application of the uh, laser light uh, during this process. Now, you see uh, actually when the pulse laser is applied of course, over a small time the laser is applied if you see the peak power is very very high, power is very very high. Of course, if you take an average I, I mean to say that average means it is it basically equivalent to the continuous supply of the laser light to the system. So, when you take the average of the this pulse current it becomes very low average power is very low, but peak power is very high. So, that is the characteristics of the using the pulse laser system, but if you look into the continuous wave system it is a continuous over the time there is a continuous supply of the laser light. So, uh, this laser remains continuously until it is a stop. So, this way we can use both the pulse mode of the laser light and continuous mode of the laser light both the options are there. Now, overall if we look into some facts related to the uh, laser welding system we see the point wise uh, the we can say the advantage of disadvantage of the laser system one is that excellent metallurgical properties can be established in the weld uh, that is the advantage using the laser system and this should be compared with the arc welding system and then the heat affected zone adjacent to the weld is very narrow and of course, as compared to the arc welding system. So, that is the advantage aspect ratio that means in this case a depth to the width ratio usually more order of 10 is to 1 can possible to achieve using the laser beam welding system. Of course, this aspect ratio is much more if you follow the keyhole mode laser welding system, but aspect ratio is less if you follow the conduction mode laser welding system. So, that is why it can achieve 10 is to 1 uh, in that ratio that means depth to width ratio can achieve using the laser beam welding system. Focused laser light provides the high energy density definitely the laser is basically focused in the very small area. So, that is why an energy density associated with the laser is much more higher as compared to the arc welding system. Laser can be used at the even room temperature okay, and in the room temperature laser system can be utilized. In this case no need of any vacuum chamber and of course, not necessary to create any kind of the x-ray sealing is required using a laser system. These are the uh, typical uh, advantage uh, associated to the laser welding system. Now, if you look at the disadvantage also. So, cooling is actually very rapid in uh, laser welding system even as compared to the arc welding system. So, when cooling rate is very rapid then it can create some kind of the uh, cracking phenomena associated with the laser welding system. Maximum joint thickness that can be welded by laser beam is the somehow limited. So, of course, the thickness of the weld joint up to certain extent we can we can reach even we uh, if, even we can apply for the keyhole mode laser welding system, but there is a certain limit we can reach using this uh, laser system. 
high reflectivity and high thermal conductivity of the materials for example this is a problem in aluminum and copper alloy can affect it with the oilability of the laser because when the um, high thermal conductivity of the material even it is problematic in case of the arc welding system also but the same way it is problematic for the laser welding system also because in this case when the heat pow power density may not sufficient for welding of the copper and aluminum because the thermal conductivity of this material are very very high. So whatever heat is applied very quickly dissipate the heat. So concentration of the heat to, uh, the, is basically less associated with this system. So it is a very common problem with the laser welding system even it is true in case of the arc welding system also. Some well porosity, some brittleness may be expected due to the rapid solidification characteristics. So when rapid solidification usually occurs during this rapid solidification in the sense that laser welding is associated with the very rapid solidification as compared to the arc welding system. So during the solidification the entrapment of the this uh, gas might be there the surrounding gas so it creates some kind of the porosity and of course it is a the brittle nature of uh, welded joint might happen but of course in this case if we perform some kind of the heat treatment techniques also we can reduce not the oil porosity but we can reduce the uh, brittleness nature of the uh, laser welded component. Laser tends to have fairly low energy conversion system efficiency that means actually laser light when utilizing CO2 laser or NDOAC laser all laser light is basically associated with the, the thermal efficiency is actually very low. It can go around around 20 percent, it can go 20, 25 percent like that. But if you look into the arc welding system the efficiency is much higher as compared to the laser welding system. So that is the another disadvantage associated with the laser welding system. The joints must be accurately positioned laterally under the beam. So of course because laser is focused in a very small area. So very uh, small smith alignment of the laser teeth it creates uh, the problems associated with the laser welding system. So as much as accurately position of the system is required uh, in specific to the laser welding system. So these are the just basic understanding of the positive side and the negative side of the uh, laser welding system. Now I will talking about the electron beam welding system. So in this case the source of the heat in electron beam welding is highly ener energetic electron beam or which is allowed to strike the workpiece at a point of the making the joint. So definitely energetic uh, electron beam is the flow the beam of the electron which is completely different from the laser system because laser the concept of the laser is basically considered laser as a light with very specific wavelength and it is focused using the optical lens and one particular position so that is the laser system works. But in electron beam welding system is the flow of the electron it converted beam is so similarly we can focus on the beam one particular position and highly energetic highly accelerated beam the uh, when it is interacting with the workpiece the release the kinetic energy and basically heat the, the substrate material. So heat generation is way, uh, in that way it can generate the heat. So of course the mechanism are completely different from the laser system. But of course we know that if it, the electron beam can travel in the open air it must be deflected or affected by the presence of the air. So therefore it is definitely created under the vacuum to prevent scattering of the electron beam and usually we use the um, in electron beam system we use the usually the vacuum vacuum in case of the electron beam system. So that is why when try to use the vacuum chamber uh, the flow of the electron in electron beam welding system it becomes costly actually to create the vacuum chamber. Then it is comparatively newer method of welding with several advantages of course more advanced I can say the more advanced technology uh, as compared to the laser welding system very low heat affected zone very deep penetration even more than the laser welding system and almost negligible thermal distortion. Thermal distortion is very very small and this produce very high quality oil because it is uh, the oil joint is performed under the vacuum. So there is a not chance having the contamination of the presence of the air and reacting of the molten metal with the the, the elements of the air because it performs in the vacuum. So that is why it does not require any flux, not filler material and it when it is not using any not required any kind of the sealing atmosphere. Metal usually welded electric beam, refractory metals, reactive metals which is having difficulty in laser and other arc welding system even for the super alloy which is having prone to form some kind of the crack formation during the processing even it is for the uh, stainless steel which is uh, this uh, 
bio grade and uh, basically the biological grade uh, stainless steel we can use in that cases probably we do not want any kind of the defect formation. So, in that can this other typical application of the electron. So, refractory metals we know the the here the uh, melting temperature is very very high. So, that is why electron we can use reactive metals which is reactive metals is in other welding system which is reactive metal very quickly create some kind of the oxide or contamination presence of the even very small quantity of the elements of the uh, atmosphere. So, that is why in that cases it is vacuum. So, uh, reactive material can be performed successfully using the electron move system. Super alloy tendency to form the uh, crack formation. So, we can process it using the super alloy or maybe dissimilar welding metals also having some problem. So, we can perform using the electron mu welding system, but even for the stainless steel because here we can produce the stainless steel in electron welding because it, it is almost any defect free welded component can be produced. So, that is why it is application in electronics industry, nuclear, automotive industry and aircraft industry which is basically requirement of the high precision high safety requirement is also there. So, for that cases we can utilize the electron beam welding system, but major decision electron beam with the equipment cost is very very high. So, even uh, oil rate join produced by the oil electron beam welding process is also very high cost is very high. At the same time another difficulties is the it produce the x-ray radiation that is the another problem associated with the, the electron beam welding process. Now, all these types of the machine include the following common elements of course, in a, there are several varieties of the electron beam welding system, but in general if you look into the component of the electron beam welding system, it is having this typical component one is the source of the electron or electron gun. So, where the electron will be produced basically in this case, then a working chamber the total working chamber is there through which we can put the sample and electron welding process is actually performed. A method of positioning of the workpiece. So, just positioning of the workpiece because in this case the positioning of the workpiece is very very important because electron beam focused on the very small area even for laser less than that of a laser system. So, that is why positioning of the workpiece where we exactly want to perform welding joint. So, in that case it is very important to focusing or positioning of the workpiece in electron welding system. A high voltage supply. So, high voltage supply may be try to accelerate the electron one is generation of the electron from the electron uh, beam uh, electron gun electron beam gun. So, high voltage accelerate the electron. So, in impart the high velocity of the electron in the system then vacuum system just to complete uh, this thing protected uh, outside atmosphere and of course, because the scattering of the electron can be avoided in presence of the vacuum system. Then welding jigs just to hold the workpiece in a uh, perform the welding system. But if you see cathode is there, anode is there and maybe uh, here the source of the electron gun electron is generated and between cathode and anode we can apply the high voltage such that this electron will be highly accelerated at the next part. So, high accelerated electron is basically now we use them some focusing coil, some focusing coil. So, uh, then the it try to focus on the particular and then then it passes through the deflection coil. Deflection coil means we just deflect uh, the electron beam in such a way that to deflect the electron beam and just to put on the workpiece surface. So, that is the purpose of using deflection. But remember, when you are talking about the focusing coil and the deflection coil. In this case, we try to use the some kind of the magnetic focusing coil because in this case the electron beam will be affected by the magnetic field. So, therefore, we try to we use the focusing beam uh, focusing coils, the magnetic focusing coil we try to utilize here. Even for the deflection coil, also we try to use the magnetic field here just to deflect the electron beam where, wherever required within the workpiece, uh, within the workpiece. So, the positioning of the workpiece from this thing. Uh, is done partially by the deflection coil. So, here the different from the laser system because laser system we can focus on the laser light using the optical lens, but here we can use the magnetic lens because it is the flow of the electron in electron beam welding system. So, here is the difference.
principle of the electron beam welding system we see the electron beam can be found under vacuum we have already discussed and uh, strike the metal at the velocities which is can be go up to the 70 percent of the speed of the light so that much of high velocity can be uh, achieved in the electron beam welding system so here 95 percent of the electrons kinetic energy is basically converted to the heat energy so that means efficiency is very high actually in these cases and of course in this because it is uh, happening under the chamber vacuum chamber electron beam can be focused on a diameter in the range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 millimeter. This is the typical values. The within that range, we can focus on the electron beam. But one key feature is the ability to perform very deep penetration welding process and with even for keyhole mode also applicable in case of the electron beam welding system. Here also you can create the keyhole mode and using this keyhole mode deep penetration welding uh, is possible to achieve even it is more than that of the any kind of the laser welding system. But process parameter for example, uh, it is the accelerating voltage so already we apply the high voltage accelerating voltage means the just to accelerate the electron speed. Accelerating voltage increase the depth of penetration will also increase. So, uh, in this case the depth of if we want to increase the depth of penetration we can enhance the accelerating voltage. Beam current given accelerating voltage the penetration will increase with the uh, beam current. So, in this case we create the beam current is basically used to create the, the electron beam. So, penetration will increase with the beam current. Then travel speed, we know the travel speed is also if you usually electron beam welding system the, the welding can be performed at a very high speed and that, is, that speed is more than that of a laser system. So, therefore, travel speed is the become the narrower and penetration will decrease. But when there is a increment of the laser uh, this uh, travel speed of the electron beam. So, in that case on the over the work piece the heat input per unit length will decrease. So, therefore, in that cases the when it is like that. So, penetration will reduce with the increase of with increase of the travel speed and that is true in case of the any other welding system when you use when you increase the the welding speed. So, heat input per unit length actually decreases. So, when that is decreases the penetration is uh, will also decrease, but it is more obvious more uh, relevant. So, that is more clearly observed in case of the electron beam welding process because this change the decrement can be less in case of the arc welding system, but it is very much obvious uh, in, in case of the, the electron beam welding system. Beam spot size, the sharp focus of the of the beam will produce the narrow parallel side welding geometry because the effective beam power density will, will be the maximum. So, spot size is small means the beam the power density is also very high. So, when power density is very high then it is the in the it will try to create much depth of penetration uh, during the um, this welding process. So, these are the typical uh, relation of the nature of the this uh, process parameter on the weldability of the uh, electron beam welding system. Now, very special characteristics of the electron beam welding system some fact or information related to that is that extremely high power density it can go up to 10 to the power 9 watt per meter square in that uh, at the focus of the beam and uh, energy transfer not uh, energy transfer occurs not by the conduction of the heat across the surface of the workpiece, but much more efficiently within the workpiece itself. So, basically the energy transfer is much more effectively is the work piece because where it is creating the, the some kind of the keyhole forms usually occurs and because of that the more energy will transfer because formation of the keyhole and not exactly the energy transfer on all energy not transfer on the surface rather more is energy will transfer because along the depth direction. No H preparation is necessary regardless of the thickness of the workpiece and filler metal is not required in this particular case and high welding speed can produce uh, can be achieved using this thing and it produces the narrow oils and heat affected zone and of course very little distortion of the workpiece. But of course in this case is under vacuum carried out under vacuum no consumables are required to protect the oil pool from oxidation. Short evacuating times can achieve by adapting the working chamber to suit the number of size of the workpiece. So, basically very quickly can uh, fill the chamber evacuated uh, the chamber and of course, the welding process can be uh, performed first and changing of the material from one welding to another oil, next welding that that time is actually very low and we can perform so much of welding system uh, using the electron beam welding um, process. Computer of course, it is a uh, usually this monitoring is done by and control of the done by the this uh, using a computer system. 
So, both the electrical and mechanical welding parameters monitoring is possible using the computing system, computer system. Welding parameters of course, are highly reproducible and consistent because in this case see that uh, this repeatability that means of the system, welding system is very, very high uh, in this case because we can, we can highly reproducible. Uh, that means uh, every time we perform the oiling process, so it, we can ex expect exact the similar kind of the the oiled component. So that's why reproducibility using the electron beam welding system is much more as compared to the arc welding system, or I can see the as compared to the laser welding system. But the other side disadvantage of the electron beam welding side is that rapid solidification because it is a under vacuum but very rapid solidification occurs. So, that actually induce some kind of the defects or some bring some brittleness to the component. It can the porosity can happen, crack may produce also because of the presence of the very rapid solidification. And of course, use of the vacuum chamber is basically limited by the limits the size of the workpiece to handle. So, if you have the very big workpiece, if you perform the electron boiling process, then it is very difficult because that big workpiece may not be able to accommodate within the small vacuum chamber. So, that is why the um, component size is basically decided by the size of the vacuum chamber associated with the electron boiling system. So, possible beam deflection may happen by the electrostatic and magnetic field in case of the dissimilar metal. Because dissimilar metal, the magnetic permeability of the two different metal are different usually in this case, but that is why when try to focus at the interface of, uh, of the between the two material. So, because of the seaback effect, the beam can deflect any one side of the material. So, it is very difficult to focus exactly at the interface. So, that is why that because of the magnetic because magnetic field the electron beam flow of the electron beam is basically is affected by the presence of the magnetic field. So, that is why this is the problematic associated with the dissimilar welding using the electron beam welding system. Uh, of course, material must be electrical conductivity is must be there and high precision of the seam preparation is there because seam preparation means we have to focus on the very exact precision position the electron beam is also required. So, that is why very high precision seam preparation is required. So, very uh, small misalignment may not be able to track by the electron beam welding system that is the one difficulties. Of course, it produces the X-ray formation is there. So, to emission of the secondary electrons from the workpiece. So, that is the one another difficulties or um, I say that this demerit of the electron beam welding system and finally, equipment cost is very, very high associated with the electron beam welding. So, these are the typical disadvantage associated with the electron beam welding process. But of course, even they are having disadvantages, but the electron beam welding process is paper when there is a need to very high precision almost defect free components are required in that cases we can utilize the electron beam welding process. Even even the cost is very high, but we can rely on this thing. That is why we can find out the electron beam welded component mostly in the this uh, um, aerospace industry we can we, we can find because we can more reliability of the welded joint is much high using the electron beam welding system. So, that is all I have tried to uh, explain the, uh, the laser welding system and electron beam welding system in this particular module. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.